we, we talked about Agile and this notion of value driven, right? And I just wanted to really put it side by side versus the, the plan driven or traditional approach. So we see the difference. And we talked about this before, right? The, the paradigm shift that's happening from plan driven to value driven. So visually here, plan driven looks something like this, okay? where we have a bunch of requirements, no specific priority to them. We take these requirements and we estimate. What are the, what's the cost and resources needed? What's the time needed right, to deliver these? And then we come up with the plan. The plan is basically telling us how to use these resources and this time according to this plan to deliver the scope. You guys agree? Simple? OK, so great. Let's start working. So we do the analysis part, the design, the coding, the testing, and we deliver. All this time, we are following the plan, OK, because the plan tells us how to do stuff. And then we do that, and we deliver value at the end right on the deadline. Congratulations. Right. Simple, great, no problem. Now, the reality is these new must-haves come into the picture. And these new must-haves come into the picture. Why? Because of the learning and discovery that's constantly happening. Okay. So when they come into the picture, where do they really go? Well, this, this triangle gets bloated really quickly, right? Because now you've added stuff into it, but it really, it's fixed from every valve, right? And so what happens? Crunch test time, stress, miss deadlines. What happens? Now, what I've seen commonly happen is basically, it's not just about missing the deadline. We just don't deliver value by the deadline. Because I've seen teams that release on the deadline, but it's so buggy that there's no value, right? So we end up usually delivering value later. Now, keep this in mind and, keep, and, and look at this, right? By the deadline, how much value did the organization actually get? Now let's look at a value-driven approach. The value-driven approach, this picture, has two differences than the first one. Number one is priority. These requirements are prioritized. And number two is how the plan works. Right? So there's still a plan, but the plan is not activity-based. It's value-based. Right? So the plan says, I'm going to give you these two requirements first, then these two, then these two, then these two. Right? Now, who prioritizes? The customer. Okay. Now, another view of this may be: I have this much fixed resources, this much time. What can I get? Right. Where can I stop? It's the same thing to a degree. Now, notice here we flipped the triangle and we said: Okay, our resources are fixed, our time is fixed, and we're going to use the time and resources according to the discretion of these people or the customers, right, to tell us which scope we get. This is how we say that the scope is estimated and we negotiate it. And then when we work, we work this way. We build things in thin slices, where every slice has its analysis, design, coding, and testing. We have a valuable product at the end of each one of these little time boxes. OK? Now, when we look at the value curve, the value curve looks something like this. Why? Because at the end of every box, I'm delivering something of value. And it's plateauing because, yeah, the most valuable stuff I've done first. Right? And then comes the less valuable, lowest value. Now, when new must-haves come into the picture here, no problem. The new must-haves come in, and they go right down here. And what happens? These guys determine what needs to be worked on next. So we welcome change, and these, not, these new must-haves may not be the, still the highest priority. But they come in, and then these guys constantly are looking and determining what is the highest priority. Now, both delivery approaches miss the deadline. There's no magic here. Both of them miss the deadline. The big question is, at the deadline, who got more value? And then the more powerful aspect of this is what we call trim the tail. Because trim the tail says, could I have stopped here? Should I have stopped here? 
will investing this much give me value? Right? And that becomes the whole cost of development versus the value we're getting. And that's really what we want to look for, which is how early can we stop this? Because it's not just about finishing scope for the sake of finishing scope. And this, this discussion goes a little deeper, really, to the whole notion of a project, right? Because the project has a start and a stop and a defined scope. Well, the whole point is, why should we allocate money to something where it may not all be valuable? <laughs> and it, maybe we can stop here, right? And on the organizational scale, find another project where instead of investing here, I'm going to invest in another project here and get more value from a portfolio perspective. But the challenge is we, we don't do that because we have money allocated to projects, right? And if you don't spend all the money, you're not going to get for your next project, right? And, and so the, the, the whole financing piece, again, it's all plan driven, not value driven. Plan from a financial perspective, from a scope perspective, from a resources perspective, it's all plan driven. It's a culture of plan driven. Now, the big difference between these two approaches is priority. And I'm going to do a little exercise with you guys to sort of highlight prioritization and how it's done. Okay? And then we'll reflect on this. So, you guys ready? Okay. So, what I'm going to need from you guys is to come over here. Come on, all of you. It's totally fine. I'm going to bring my timer here. Um, I need a volunteer. We're going to have to write stuff. And they, they should be a good multitasker. Who's a good multitasker here? Come on, guys. Yeah, I know. <laughs> what? Okay, so you can stand right here. And gentlemen, take a card. Just yeah, just pick a card from here. So what these cards have are um, random five-lettered words, right? Random five-lettered words. And basically, you're going to just practice here for, we're going to do a practice run here for a second. So um, I'm going to start a timer. Okay, and I'm going to start reading one letter at a time, just one letter at a time, and you're just going to write the word down, that's it. Your job is very simple. You ready? Sure. Okay. W. O. R. L. D. So, I want you to notice what I did. I waited till you finished the letter, then I told them the next letter. That's the, really the only rule we have. So, you just can't say world, all right? You can't say W-O-R-L-D. No. You have to wait, look. As soon as he finishes a letter, you tell him the next letter. So we finished that in seven seconds. That was seven seconds. Great job. Simple? OK. Now, the context. Each one of you is a business person, and you have your project. And there's one developer. OK? And when I say go, all five of you are going to start shouting out the first letter of the word you have. As loud as you can. Because he works by the loudest voice. Right? That's his prioritization technique. The loudest voice. So I need you to put one, two, three, four, five here. And we're just gonna go one, two, three, four, five. Okay? Now, this is not priority by any means, not even sequence. Okay? This is just so you could is that enough space for you? Or do you wanna spread it all out? Are right, you sure? It's going to get interesting. OK. So when I say start, all five of you are going to start shouting together. Your job is to decipher which letter goes where. OK? And when you see your letter written, then you can start shouting the next letter. Any questions? Now, if he makes a mistake, you cannot move forward. You actually have to shout out the correction. Now, here's what makes it challenging. You cannot shout out your number. So you can't say, one W, one W. You just shout out W. And he has to figure out where the W goes. So you can't say one. You can't say, it's not an M, it's an N. 
for example. Right, and he has to relate that to number three and then fix number three. If one of you finishes, the rest of you keep going. Okay? You, you really want to spread it out, trust me. Yeah. Just, just take the whole, you know, I, I feel for you. <laughs> yeah, okay. So do whatever is comfortable for you. And I'll be taking time. That's it, right? So when a word is done, I'm just going to jot down its time. And um, this is all recorded, so uh, show us your best performances here. On your marks, get set, go. Keep going. Keep going, gentlemen. should be shouting. I should hear two voices. B O A Z A. All right, round of applause here, folks. That was round one. Now, what we're going to do this time is the following. You get to say one letter, one letter, one letter, one letter, one letter, and then we go around. Good? You ready? All right, one more round, new, new cards. We can just do it right here. One, two, three, four, five. So do another one, two, three, four, five for me. Now we're going to do five letters, five letters, five letters, five letters, five letters. Okay, one letter at a time, obviously. Okay, you guys ready? You ready? Go. L I Z I C L O C K P R I Z E W O R L D F U Z Z Y. All right, round of applause for everyone. Excellent job. Excellent, excellent, excellent. That's been very, uh, bad, very bad developing the shooting. <laughs> so let's take a look and analyze this together. All right. So if we look at round one, the first word that came out was after 29 seconds. The last word was 1 minute and 11 seconds. Actually, in that one, I noticed that eventually the developer was doing the prioritizing. That's where, exactly where, it. Where Not even eventually. No, I would say. No choice. I would say initially, moment. from from the first moment, yeah. because you guys didn't prioritize. So what happens is he prioritized. He prioritized and sometimes ignored all of you, right? Until he processed and sometimes said, "I'm just listening to you. What do you want?" Right? That's what happened with Juice here. 
or juicy or whatever this thing is, right? And then he moved on. Now, what happened here in round two? The first one came out after 39 seconds, but the last one was 44. So in total, they all came out first, right, or quicker. But who was prioritizing? The process was. The process was, right? Did I just say process? Process. Right, anyway, stick to it. <laughs> you guys. You guys are getting me talking uh, all Australian now, <laughs> or New Zealand. Whoa. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, it's cut. Like, <laughs> it's like us telling you speaking like a Canadian. Oh, okay. I get it. I get it. I get it. So, so the point here, there was really no prioritization. It was process. It was sequence. Here, you actually prioritized. Now, when you actually prioritized, the last one to come out here was quicker than the first one here. And if you want to look at quality, feel free also to look at quality, <laughs> right? And, and it, it never fails. I mean, it, it, actually, it actually does have an effect. Just even look between these two, right? So what we're trying, and, and, and again, you get the highest value out after four seconds. That's a great return on investment right there. And then the next one, 8 seconds, 14, 18, 24, right? I mean, you are, you're getting value. Now, the challenge is, we don't prioritize. And the business has got used to not prioritizing, right? And so what happens is, this. they don't prioritize, they just tell people to do things, and it's up to people. It's the loudest voice. It's the emergencies. Who you want to get off your back? That's how prioritization really happens in organizations. And it's a mess. And at best, it looks something like this. Right? But this is where we need to get to. Now, unfortunately, unfortunately, this has become such a habit that when you really look at some of the symptoms like multitasking, multitasking for me is a habit of lack of priority. And that's what I wanted to link it to. Because organizations are constantly multitasking, and by multitasking, I mean start on this, do this, right? They're starting multiple things and switching, and really what you want to call out at that point is, what's the priority? And that has been such a culture, even in our lives today. Right? I'm playing with my kid and I'm checking my email. Which is more important? Make a decision and commit to it. But that culture is missing. Now, why is this important to Agile? Because one of the key things needed for Agile is prioritization. I actually don't know how to do Agile without prioritization. Because if we're all about value-driven, 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 well, someone's got to tell me the value. Someone's got to tell me what's more important than than something else. And if the business will not be engaged continuously in the prioritization of work, we have an issue. And that's really the essence of this whole part, right? So we talked about mindset, we talked about learning and discovery, we talked about all of this. But if, if all this learning and discovery coming in is just going to be added to the work that we need to do, then this is going to be a train wreck, not agility. Because we're just going to get more work with the same fixed price, fixed schedule. But the reality is, all this new work coming has to be sat down and said, okay, business, we're learning all this. What's important? They may say still, no, none of this stuff we learned is important. We're still moving. Great. But if the business cannot engage continuously in that prioritization, I don't know how to do this.